In this video, I want to share some impressions and benchmark results for the 16 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro. I've seen quite a few videos on this machine, but none have dove into what I consider this machine's target demo, which is creators and consumers of video, 3D, and AI. If you don't actively require computing power for those types of applications, this machine is probably overkill, and your money's probably better spent on the MacBook with the Pro Trip, specifically the Base Pro with its 12 core CPU and 18 core GPU. With 18 gigabytes unified memory, the 14 inch starts at around 1999 and the 16 at 2499. Now as spec, the machine that I bought runs 4199. It has a top of line M3 Max chip with its 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU, along with 64 gigs of RAM, and for me, a more than adequate enough uh, one terabyte SSD. This is honestly a lot of money to pay for any computer, but if you want a portable Mac that should fly through complex computing tests, this is the one to get. So the question is, does it fly through those tests? To help us decide and see how far we've come, we're benchmarking against my outgoing M1 MacBook Pro. This was the base model at the time and for around $2,000 came with the 8-core CPU and 14-core GPU, and I spec'd it with 16 gigs of RAM. Now to be clear, the M3 should be much faster than this one, but that's not really the point. My expectation is the machine will enable me to work more efficiently and more importantly, open up new avenues of work that simply weren't possible before. So start with AI. I have two main programs to test, private LLM for chat and draw things for image generation. The results here actually surprised me quite a bit. First, chat. The program we're using is a paid app on the Mac App Store called Private LLM. It features two models, Maestro 7B Open Orca, and for 16 gig machines like we have here, the more capable Wizard LM 13B. Here's where I was surprised. Using the more complex 13 billion parameter model routinely resulted in the older M1 completing chat tasks in about the same time as the M3, but the M3's answers were significantly more detailed. For example, asking what clouds are made from resulted in an answer almost five times as long on the M3 compared to the M1. Now that said, the initial times to first response were much faster on the M3, and individual token generation, especially for shorter responses, was also much faster. Here we can see the M3 generating response faster than what I can read, as opposed to the M1, which pokes along a lot slower. Overall, this is a huge win for the M3, and better still, the developer plans to release larger models that will require 32 gigs of RAM or more. My Max's 64 gigs of RAM provides plenty of overhead, whereas the M1 16 gigs is simply going to be left out in the cold. Now, that's one potential buying lesson here. If you're already spending several thousand dollars on one of these machines, I'd highly recommend you grab at least 64 gigs of RAM. Honestly, having less means you're potentially depriving these incredible processors of their full potential. One quick oddity I'll have to mention is while running these LLMs, both machines produced a high pitch whine. It's not hurting anything, but it's the first time I've ever heard this behavior from these machines. And it happened on both of them, the M3 and M1. Okay, let's move on to image generation via stable diffusion. For this task, I use an app called Draw Things, and going into this purchase, my primary hope was the performance I get would be much closer to my PC with its dedicated GPU, which is an RTX 3080. I want to be clear here. From this task, it's more than just raw time. It's about how I tend to work with image generation. The gist is for me, this is an iterative task, meaning I rarely get the result I want on the first go, which means the faster I can spit out images, the more likely I am to use this technology. With my PC, I'm able to spit out a square 512 pixel image with 20 steps in just over two seconds. That's fast enough that this may as well be instantaneous. And here's where I was the most looking forward to this new machine. With the same task, the M1 was just too darn slow. Each image using approximately the same settings would take anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute to generate, making that iterative workflow a real pain. So how does the M3 Max chip do? Surprisingly well. In short, a 512 by 512 image takes about four and a half seconds. Not quite as good as the 3080, but now more than fast enough to enable that quick iterative workflow. Moving up to a 768 by 768 image, the PC clocks in at 6 seconds, the M1 at 65, and the M3 at 14. I'm quite happy with this result, 
but I would implore Apple to keep improving its hardware and software in this area. Finally, using the Stable Diffusion XL 8-bit model at 30 steps, the M3 took 11 seconds compared to 55 on the M1, and going up to 150 steps, the M3 completed it in 54 seconds compared to the M1's 272. So as far as image generation takeaways, the M3 is much more usable, to the point where I have no complaints. The PC still dominates, and to be clear, the RTX 4090 is twice as fast again as my 3080. But overall, the M3 enables AI workflows to a far greater degree than my M1. It goes from, that's neat, to a tool I actually want to use. Now, a couple of quick notes. DrawThings lets you set which compute units are used, with your options being CPU and GPU, CPU and Neural Engine, or all. I found that with the M1, the results are about the same across all options, but on the M3, the neural engine becomes a liability, posting results that are up to 40% slower than just using the CPU and GPU. Something to keep in mind moving forward for Apple's designers of the neural engine. Okay, on to 3D. So here the results are far more stark and honestly all come with a pretty big caveat. See, the M3 chips now support hardware ray tracing, and just as we saw when the same feature came to the NVIDIA 30 and AMD 6000 series cards, there is a night and day difference between rendering with hardware ray tracing and without. Bottom line though, I ran a few common scenes and the results are just plain awesome. For the classic BMW scene, the M3 finished in eight and a half seconds compared to a minute 15 on the M1. There's a note here too, which is that the BMW benchmark was created long before the optical denoisers became as powerful as they are today. This means we can easily pull our samples down to around 300 while making sure to turn on the open image denoiser. The results are on the same quality, but much faster still. And so in this case, on the M1, we get down to 19 seconds. On the M3, three seconds. The big surprise for me here was the M3 is now almost as fast as my 3080, which finishes a second faster using the optics rendering engine. When the PC uses CUDA, however, the M3 was actually faster by about 20%. Again, a great result for Apple here. Moving on to the more complex tugboat scene, we find the PC finished in 24 seconds, the M3 at 30, and the M1 at a rather leisurely three minutes and 54 seconds. Now, honestly, I could go on with more scenes, but the point is hopefully clear. The M3's hardware ray tracing is, well, it's a night and day difference and honestly kind of a game changer. One final note about these tests, hardware ray tracing is so key to this machine's performance that you actually get worse performance and higher power consumption when you enable the CPU. Specifically for Tugboat, I saw render times go from 28 to 32 seconds, all while having the fan spin up to be quite loud. Whereas with the GPO only, we were actually faster and with total silence. And so for my conclusion, this is for me personally a fantastic upgrade. Every task I perform is faster and specifically when it comes to hardware ray tracing, strikingly so.